<laughs> so fucking weird I'm doing this. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> Man. Okay, YouTube. Oh, where is it coming from? Oh, mute you. Oh, I'm going to mute you. Pause you. Okay. Where's Facebook? Wait. <clears throat> okay. And we're live on... <clears throat> Am I live there? Oh, is that Wesley just saying hi? Hey, Wesley, what's up, man? for it okay i'm gonna work on this little stupid thing a bit more oh let me switch views so here's i think i just show this might as well if you ever working on a paper that you're trying to paint on and you uh, use double-sided tape behind it to try to stick it down <coughs> just get some painter's tape and try stick it on the corner overlap the corner like that <clears throat> that allow you to um, have the paper corners down, obviously. And you'll have to paint over the corners later because you'll have the little white spaces where you didn't paint. <clears throat> but make sure you use painter's taint. <laughs> tainter's paint. Make sure you use tainter's paint. <laughs> <clears throat> Isn't the taint the little gap between the thing and the thing? <laughs> Anyhow, painter's tape. Because if you use regular tape, it'll rip off your paper. It'll rip off the surface of, you know, your paint, painting. Now, you have to use just the right amount. This is actually a bit more than I normally do, but this paper is pretty strong and it's pulling up. Isn't that exciting? <coughs> All right. Hey, Autistic Bot's there. What's up, Autistic Bot from India? <laughs> so I'm doing this painting. Because uh, I just joined this kind of like art group thing. <clears throat> and they said, uh, just, I don't even know what the purpose is. This is a, this is a TTC bot. Oh, in Toronto where I live, we have public transit. And it's called TTC, Toronto Transit Commission. And then one of the streetcars. <clears throat> it's actually the newer version of the Red Rocket. But it's called the Red Rocket. It's like one of those colloquial terms we have. Anyhow. <clears throat> For some reason, they said, hey, you know, we're going to, like, do a little showing of people who submit paintings about red, the Red Rocket. <clears throat> so, and it's it's on, uh, it's in about two weeks I got to submit it by. And I just thought, you know, what the hell, maybe I will. <clears throat> it could be anything. It could be impressionistic, abstract. So, <clears throat> God damn it. So I thought, why don't I do the Red Rocket, like, in a weird forest, just sitting there. Doesn't even make sense. Now, the thing is, I hate, really don't like drawing realistic stuff, especially mechanical, because it just requires a lot more, it's basically copying, and I don't like copying. Copying pisses me off. So, and also, it's just boring. It's just like straight lines and everything. <clears throat> anyway, so I found that one picture right here. <clears throat> it's on my computer screen, and that's what I'm using as a reference. <clears throat> It's actually a streetcar, not a bus. Here, I'll show you. If you look carefully, whoops, at the bottom, you can see, well, maybe you can't see so well, but this is like part of the railing system. That's like the part of the engine, electric engine, I guess it is. <coughs> up here, it uses, it has this like little hook thing that gets its power from the lines up there. <coughs> Anyhow, I thought just to participate in this kind of group, I would I would do this thing. There's nothing deep about it or anything. <sighs> I 
Wait, someone on Facebook said... Oh, that's me. <laughs> it says Josh Druck. It cuts it off. <clears throat> hey, how come... Wait, how come DLive is not online? That's weird. Just give me a second. Why won't that work? I'm. Just, let me just... Here, I'll just show you what I'm... Okay, no, I am live. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I, gotta, I always forget to press stuff. I always forget to record this stuff. Okay, now I'm going to record it. All right. I'm going to get the show on the road here. Oh, you know what I like about doing this is... <clears throat> fuck it. That's what I like about doing it. Okay. My biggest concern right now is I don't have enough coffee. Oh yeah, here, here's here's my exciting thing. I just discovered my dog likes broccoli. <clears throat> so here's a little bit of leftover broccoli from last night. I'm going to give it to her. I oh, can see this. Hi, baby. Come on. You're such a good girl with some broccoli. Oh, is that good? Oh, you get it. That's it. Get it going. I don't know if you can even see that. <clears throat> you want some more? Come here. You like broccoli, you weirdo? Come on up. Oh, good girl. You want some more? Oh, here's a big piece of broccoli. You want that? Yes, you do. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Chomp, chomp, chomp. You want some more? Come over here. All right. Let's get that broccoli up in you. It's organic. Organic broccoli. Oh, here. I'll tell you what. I'll put this down here. You go to town. Broccoli and golden retriever. What kind of weirdo is that? Okay. <clears throat> why don't you try new things? What are you talking about? Why don't I try new things? <clears throat> Remember, you're supposed to be afraid of me. <clears throat> I've done everything. I've done everything you can imagine. I've been doing this for 40 more years. I've done paintings about every subject, every topic, million, tons of different styles. <clears throat> You just do not know artistic bot in India. You just do not know. If you go to my website, you could look around. There's like eight or 900 things there. <clears throat> hey, Melissa. What's up? Artistic bot. Why don't you try something new? I do something new all the time for crying out loud. Okay. All right. So am I going to work on this stupid streetcar? Or I'm going to work on the background. <clears throat> what am I going to do? I just feel like doing this shit now. And yeah, I'm going to add more grays and stuff. I got to stop. I got to. Here's something, a change I'm going to make. I think I'm going to make go away from less bright, intense colors. <clears throat> and something I want to do for a while. <clears throat> How's this for doing something new? I've been wanting to go and actually take photographs of nature and use those as reference. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. <clears throat> One of my favorite expressions. What was it from a movie? What movie was it? <laughs> it's such a like <clears throat> obnoxious, immature, rebellious expression. <clears throat> what does he say? It's like, is it something like Joe Pesci or something? Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Maybe go fuck yourself. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> I love that line. It cracks me up every time. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Maybe go fuck yourself. <laughs> Someone's got to find that for me. Come on, Wesley. Use the internet. <clears throat> what about this, this green color? Oh. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, I gotta go back to this chat window so I can see if anyone's talking to me here. Why is this shirt going through the forest? The question is, why not? <clears throat> That's the question. The answer to that question is found in one of my favorite songs. So I was streaming, was it yesterday or the day before when I started this? And I was playing all kinds of music. <clears throat> Facebook killed it. It turned off most of I, so I was streaming for like an extra hour and I didn't even realize everything was turned off because of the music it, it detected the music I was playing and 
hit a copyright strike of some kind. Anyhow, I was playing Once in a Lifetime by Talking Heads, which sums up my philosophy quite, quite well. And it has to do with like the nonsensical nature of life, that there doesn't need to be a reason. Once in a lifetime, let the water hold me down. So, I guess there's a couple kind of reasons. Like, you know, there's all, there is a reason why I do things. Um, a lot of it is unconscious, and sometimes it takes me a little while to realize what my reasons are. They sort of, sort of flash through my mind, but I just let, the, I, I, and I just sort of go with my intuition. But if I so stop and think about it, the reasons are thus. Um, I just want to paint a streetcar. That would be boring. Because streetcars are really fucking boring to look at. There's nothing that interesting about them. Two, I'm digging doing these landscapes that I make up as I go. I like it. It's fun. <clears throat> Three, if I was to do a, a painting of a streetcar, I was going to do like an abandoned streetcar. But then again, that would have been just being copying a photo that I found on the internet, and I don't really want to do that. And four, I really hate taking the TTC. Like, you can't imagine how much I hate taking it. Hate. With a capital H. I had to take it, you know, growing up, going to high school, going everywhere you had to see. And I just didn't like being around people that close and just, it's annoying, it's slow. And, you know, I'd rather not go somewhere if it takes too long. And so I never liked the damn TTC. I never liked the stupid streetcar. Oh, I remember because I used to have to go to... I remember when I was a kid, from maybe around age 11 to 12 or 13, I had to take the streetcar north to go to the stupid Hebrew school, which I hated also almost as much as a stupid bus and streetcar. So I had these horrible... Every time I got on the streetcar, I was like filled with dread having to go to this weird synagogue, deal with these weird people, talking about this weird religion, and just learning about this weird language. I had to learn Hebrew, <clears throat> of which I faked it mostly. So I have mixed feelings. That's why I said, fuck it, I'm going to put the streetcar in a, in a place. Oh, yeah, here's the other funny thing. <clears throat> Let me show you. This is kind of funny. I got to go to my desktop here. No, desktop. This is desktop. Okay, so... I have, when I was looking for pictures, oops, I just got to move these things out of the way. I found this photograph. This cracks me up. This is totally true. This is a photograph of, <clears throat> in Toronto, from maybe the 80s. I don't know. Like, this is a, these are the old Red Rockets. I grew up literally just over here, around the corner, like about pff, a minute walk from here. Literally on these tracks, I had a shitty old 10 speed bike, and like I can't, I'm not kidding you. Like this spot, I was biking along, and my front tire got stuck in here, and I went poof, head over heels, and I smashed my face like right here. So I was gonna do the picture of this, but I just thought, what a boring picture! Like, oh my god, it's like dreary and boring, and just bleh. look at this, like, there's nothing interesting going on. But I thought that was pretty cool to have found that picture. <clears throat> that was kind of... And that's also where I found the stack of Playboys when I was a kid. That was... some At some point, I was talking about porn. And uh, the only porn we had was like Playboy and Hustler back then. And right around the corner from that exact spot, I remember me and my buddy were biking. Because back then, you biked everywhere. Like, that was before you would take the TTC. You, bike, you just biked everywhere. And uh, we found a stack of Playboys. Oh, my God. That was exciting. I don't know if we divvied them up or what we do with them. <clears throat> I went to Hebrew school. Yeah. Oh, my God. I hated Hebrew school so much. I was like such an outsider. I didn't feel part of it. The only cool thing was my rabbi. My rabbi was a good family friend, like very good family friend, like part of our family. Basically, he grew up with my uh, grandmother. They grew up at an orphanage together in Winnipeg. And he was a awesome human being. Like he had this voice that would, he had this voice, this deep voice. 
<clears throat> Whoa. And he would, he would, and he was, um, he did not mess around. Like he, he was all about like truth and, and everything. He got kicked out of the synagogue because he was taught, he was, he was basically, he wasn't doing these nice, happy sermons. And eventually he went and he did his sermons in a church, United, uh, like one of those um, non denominational churches. But it was cool. Like this guy was like, I'm almost positive. I have to double check with my family, but I'm pretty sure he was like an advisor to like, one of the prime ministers of Israel, like, like that kind of shit. Like he was so, he was almost like a, the Jewish Pope in a way. His name is um, Reuben Slonim. Reuben? I don't know. He was always Rabbi Slonim to me. And that was, he was the only reason why I actually liked going to that damn Hebrew school because it was just so interesting what he would talk about. Like, so here's the stuff that I didn't know when I, before I went there. What you do when you have a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah, that's sort of like the coming of age ceremony in Judaism. A bar mitzvah is for a male and bat mitzvah is for a female. And I don't, I don't think there's any other differences other than the name. Anyhow, one of the things you have to do is you got to recite in Hebrew a passage. And I, I can't remember how the passage is selected for you. I think the rabbi selects it for you. I think that's what happens. Yes, I think that's what happens. I think because the rabbi sort of gets to know you and says, okay, this is your this is your passage. And they call it a Nuggish. Oh, you're right. She's actually a pretty good guard dog, believe it or not. She's like, oh, I just gotta go. That's what you're noticing. You are so good. At it. Good girl, Nugget. Good girl. You go kill him. All right. All right. So it's called a half Torah. Anyhow, what he would do, he made something. Okay, so the Torah and all the stuff is in Hebrew, and they have English translations, and you have to you have to recite it in front of a congregation in Hebrew. I got some funny stories about this. Anyhow, what he, what made it interesting was he would tell this. He picked out a half Torah for me, and I don't even remember what it's about. But he would make the stories interesting. It's like you were listening to this master storyteller with this booming voice that was like, just like a radio voice. And just the way he talked was so cool. I did a painting of him once. Let me show you this painting I did of this guy. Rabbi Slonim. I think I talked about this recently. I, I've been meaning to go and like, I have so many paintings that are at my parents' house and uh, that were kind of okay. Let me go to. I'm redoing my whole website, so I might go down. Okay, Rabbi Slonim. Here he is, portrait of Rabbi Rabbi Slonim. This is this other rabbi. He was a bit of a douche. He was a bit of a kind of like softy. Not compared to Rabbi Slonim. He didn't give a fuck. He'd be like. You, you need to stop whatever it is you're doing. Okay, this is Rabbi Slonim. That's the guy. He had this cool little mustache. <laughs> There's Rabbi Slonim. This is 48 inches by 96 inches. All right. Rabbi Slonim. God. Okay. Okay, I forget what the hell I was talking about. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm on the internet talking about stuff. All these little, all these stories, like literally, I've just never told people my entire life, except for maybe a couple good friends, like my my close good friends. I tell this now. I'm telling complete random people, like autistic bot in India. <laughs> okay, what about oh, oh yeah, so. I hated going to Hebrew school. I felt like such an outsider. I didn't look like them. I didn't sound like them. Because, you know, I'm, look, I look like a blonde. Well, I had very red hair. Very non-Jewish looking, to put it that way. So I was, I was even treated differently. Like, I was kind of like, all these other kids are very Jewish looking. I don't know. And they were probably more on the Orthodox area. And I was like, I don't even know what the hell we were. We weren't religious at all. It was all about tradition. No no religion, just tradition. So I always felt like 
What's the point? If you don't believe in it, why would you even do it? It makes no sense. So I'd have to take this stupid bus when I was a kid and go north on Toronto, uh, north on Bathurst and, and just hated being on the bus because it, it meant I had to go to this Hebrew school for a couple hours every Sunday. Kids were out playing and stuff and I was learning this like weird language. And uh, I didn't like being part of the group. When I was with Rabbi Slonim, it was kind of cool because we'd go up to his office upstairs in the synagogue and it'd be this little, tiny little room and he would say, Joshua, now, I want to, we're going to talk about this now. And he would, and, and he would sort of spin a story and then you'd be like, whoa, this is like this interpretation of this incredibly lame ass thing, I thought, and he turned it around. Like, like I'll, I'll give you one example. This is a hypothetical example. So I don't remember the exact stories, but you know, the, the story of Abraham and Isaac, the binding of Isaac, where <laughs> the story is, is it Moses? No, Abraham, of course. Abraham gets a, a message from, from an angel or, or some fucking weird burning bush or who knows what the hell. I think it was an angel and says, you, you know, you must kill your firstborn to prove you your loyalty to me. That, you know, some sort of insane like the thing like that. And Isaac is about to like literally slit his son's throat with his knife. And then another angel comes down or God comes down or whoever comes down says, you know, stop. Hold on a second. I was just joking, man. I was just messing around. Okay, you proved that you, you know, you believe in me and you worship me because I'm so awesome. So he would tell the story in a way where you're like, whoa, this is like some some Marvel Comics level stuff. And it would be with so much dr drama and authority that you just, you were riveted to what he was saying. Yeah. So that was an okay experience. And the fact, the other fact too is that the knowing that he grew up with my grandmother in this like, like, you know, like basically we think of like a horrible orphanage would be where people, people would come in and they would like pick up the kids and then, and then one day the, those kids would be gone and they're like, everyone's wishing for someone to pick them to go be part of their family and stuff. And so for years and years, I got to find out the history of my grandmother and like how she got into the orphanage. I mean, it's just a phone call away, but um, I need to like write it down. But uh, yeah, so he grew up in the orphanage. So in a way, he was kind of like family, right? And I, by then, I only had one grandparent, my grandmother. No, wait a second. No, no, my, my mom's parents were still alive then. All right, I don't really. Do you watch Are You Being Served by Chance? No, I've never heard of it. What's that about? Are you being served? Is that like a... <laughs> well, I don't watch TV. I've, I got rid of my a cable probably more than a decade ago. So I only, I'll, I'll watch Netflix or I'll find shows on YouTube or, you know, wherever. So you have to describe it a little bit. Okay, I kind of regret doing this stupid TTC thing because now I'm gonna have to start working on this TTC bus thing. Spadina bus, get on the bus. Spadina bus. Does anyone remember that? That was like a. There was a kind of a goofy band. Um. Jazz, goofy kind of band in Toronto. Came up with a song called The Spadina Bus. Oh, see, I really, really am not happy about having to do this. See, I don't want to draw these straight lines and these perfect little squares and things. I'm just going to make it up. I'm kind, I'm kind of looking at that photograph and I'm just regretting every, every millisecond of this. Holy crap, I'm complaining a lot. Well, you gotta tell me. You gotta tell me, do you watch... Wait. Mrs. Solcombe is a character with blue hair. Is a British comedy. Oh, no, I, I don't know it at all. I do remember a British comedy, which I loved. God damn, it was so funny. It's about these two older... They're, they're a bit more than middle-aged... Women, ab, ab, ab fab or absolutely ab fab or something. Holy Christ. They're like these, these alcoholic, smoking, hilarious, 
like older British ladies who are kind of trashy. No, they're really trashy. But, oh man, that was a funny ass show. You just reminded me by saying a British woman with blue haired, com- like a comedy. A- Abfab, I think it was. <laughs> but I haven't heard of this one. Are you being served? Wait, that sounds a little bit. Are you being served? Now that I'm trying to imagine. Faulty Towers. That was another one, which was pretty good. Oh, Black Adder. That was awesome. Yeah, Abfab is awesome. And I used to love the Black Adder. The Black Adder was great. It was with uh, Mr. Bean character. And the cool thing was they went through like different version of it. One was like medieval and then there was another version of Black Adder. I think it was more modern or, or I can't remember what it was, but there was like, oh man, the Black Adder. Black Adder, Black Adder. That's definitely worth people checking into. <laughs> the Black Adder. Like in one, he was a complete idiot and the other one he was like this like backstabbing not quite royalty trying to climb the royal ladder almost court jester type of character okay yeah abfab was great what is it what is that amigo a train a car on a in a forest it's a it's it's the it's the toronto it's well famous not really famous but in toronto it's the well-known streetcar in toronto and they call it the red rocket and there's a, I don't know if it's a competition or whatever the hell it is, but there's a local art group I joined said, hey, everyone submit their paintings of the Red Rocket and then we'll have a jury something, something about who knows what. So I said, fuck it, I'll do that. You know, I just joined this group, so I figured I should try to participate. And uh, they're the ones that are putting on this art show that I'm doing in two weeks. And holy shit, I got to I gotta get my shit together for that. Yeah, I'm doing an art show in two weeks. In Toronto, and they're the ones who are, they're the association that organizes it. Anyhow, I didn't want to uh, just do a picture of a, of a streetcar because I'd be boring as hell, so I thought I'd do it in like one of these forests that I like to do. That's my story. I'm going to need to get some more coffee soon. Okay. Now, the question is, let me move this thing out of the way. What am I going to do about this background and then the light and then who knows? Like, it's, this tree is very big compared to the streetcar. That's okay. Hopefully people now have figured out that I'm not into, I'm not interested in trying to make it look real. Do not care. Not important. I'll just put some splashes of color down where I think it might be like TTC. Okay. Hmm. I think I got the horizon messed up. Not only the horizon. Okay. Oh, I know how you can figure out. Here's how you can figure out the horizon. Where is the horizon? I'll show you where the horizon is. Look for lines on a perspective drawing where they converge. So this one comes here. Bloop. This one comes here. But there. Now this is my interpretation of the drawing. So if they where they converge is generally, let's say it's here. Right? Does that look about right? So the problem is, okay, let's just use let's use this line here. And maybe this line. So the horizon should be here. Oh, God, I'm so fucking good. It's scary sometimes. Yeah, so I actually do have the horizon. I just eyeballed it. I'm so awesome. So that's where the horizon is. <laughs> that 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 hyper-excited kind of... <laughs> that comes from one of my old, old friends. He used to always do that. I just... <laughs> he used to get so excited about shit. <laughs> All right. So that is where the horizon is. But it just looks stupid. Huh. What am I going to do here? I'm kind of like thinking about, I did this series called The Glow Beyond. Whoa, with the light coming through the background, everything dark in the front. <sighs> Should I do something like that? Or 
should I do? Okay, well, as I'm thinking about it, I'll go show some of those pictures. I need, sometimes I need a little time just to like, just flow. I just feel where it might go. So I'm going to go back to my website. Let's look at some of those Globion photos. I did these in 2017, I think. I did about 10 of them, I think. Go here, go to collections, and go to Globion. Boop. So these are all in order. Okay. Now these ones seem to be quite popular because I sold pretty much every one except for the biggest one, which I haven't really shown yet. These are all square versions. So they all have the same kind of theme, which is... This is why I'm switching websites, because this part is so slow, it's killing me. Look at that. It should not take 8 seconds, 9, 10, 11. It should be 2 to 3 seconds, and I'm in the process of switching hosting servers. Okay, so like, um, this is a little painting. It's only 11 by 14. And they all have this, like, horizon. Okay, so I did oranges. Wow, see, look at this. After about a few hundred hours of work of building this website, it turns out that when you, the performance just killed it. So I've got to convert the whole thing. Okay, so something like, kind of like this one. Let's look at this one. Oh, this is so painful. Okay, so this one, oh, I know what I did differently. It was like dots of solid color, or one sort of monotone kind of color. Yeah, interesting, 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 interesting. I could do something like that on this one. What I did differently is, in mine, I brought okay, so I could the horizon would be much lower. I think in all these the perspective I made it a little funkier where the perspective the horizon's very low. And I was specifically thinking about some of Gustav Klimt's paintings. And I Gustav Klimt's landscapes, fruit trees, pear tree, and the park. These are three paintings that um kind of got me inspired to do this thing. Okay. Oh, I like this one. This one was nice. I like the colors in this, and I also like the way the paintbrush strokes happen. I think this one I kind of used a bit of a palette knife and I kind of made a, here, check this out. This is pretty cool. Oh, for crying out loud. Isn't that nice? Look at, the, look at that, that's beautiful. It's almost like gems all up here. That's gorgeous, that's beautiful. Holy shit. I see, I that's some awesome shit right there. That is Beautiful, gorgeous. It reminds me a little of that stupid French Canadian painter. I kind of hate Jean Paul Ripoelli, whatever the hell the guy's name is. <laughs> but the colors, I like. I have this vignette effect, which is darkening around the edges, and it brings you to the center here. And it's kind of like strong, but also like jewel-like, faceted. And then you come down with a Van Gogh kind of flavor, flav. And then these white birch trees bring your eyes back up. And then you got this weird glow in the background. So, so this was with oils. And oils are just so much, the colors are so much richer. Oh, this is before I even bought my camera. and like set, So I, I took snapshots as I was doing it. Then I made this GIF to show the progression. Um, okay. Okay. So maybe, let me go back to my thing here. Boop. Maybe I'll keep that window open and just move it off to the side. Okay. All right. So uh, problem with gouaches is they're very subdued. They don't have that. Like Susie Paint, I don't know if you can even see this, but Susie Paint, it fades away. It becomes desaturated and muted. So it's not like you can do those crazy powerful colors. And also, too, I kind of felt 
the orange was a little bit gaudy and 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 a little tacky. And that's why I'm going to do it. Fuck it. Okay, what do I do for the bottom? Maybe I'll do browns. I could do blues here. Blues might be kind of neat. Yeah, I kinda, I'm drawn to blue for some reason. I'm drawn to blue. Get it? Drawn? Oh. Okay. What I like to do is try to bring a bunch of different shades in or hues slightly different hues just slightly different aqua horizon blue cerulean blue white blue let's bring a bunch of these mfers in here and let's just see what happens when i do this okay let's try this blue Oh, get down, get down, get down. Doodle, 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 doodle. Get down, get down. What's that from? Where's my awesome white? There's my awesome white. Okay. So now, am I gonna bring oranges into this background? Or am I just gonna keep it blue? Blue, blue, who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? Just don't anybody say anything or I'm gonna have to do the opposite no suggestions. No suggestions. Damn you, sons of bitches. <laughs> now, I'm going to get a really fine brush. I love, I'm digging this little brush. It's so tiny. Look, I'll put it next to my thumb. Look how tiny it is. It's so tiny. Let's bring some of that white down to here. I might end up putting orange and blue. That might be weird. I wonder what happened if I did that. Well, I have blue here. Are there any blues on this stupid bus? That streetcar? No, there aren't. No blues. Okay. Now the ground. What am I going to make the ground? Maybe I think I'm going to make it all dark so that the light behind, like the this uh, horizon thing, whatever you want to call it, <coughs> feels more intense. You need a contrasting of colors. What to do? What are you going to do? Autistic bot, what time is it there? Oh, it's probably late at night. I'm going to guess you're like in high school. Holy jeez. What are you doing watching some old fart doing some painting? Shouldn't you shouldn't you be sleeping? Getting your getting your um getting your shit together. <laughs> oh, damn. I'm going to waste all this blue. Oh, you can't see. I just poured a bunch of blue. It's not like a lot of paint, whatever, but I realize I don't need it so much. 
Okay, so let's get in. Oh, maybe I could use. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. Let's make a new color of paint out of it. And that way it's not wasted. Let's take some green and mix it with the blue and see what happens. Mixing paint, seeing what happens. Mixing paint. Oh, it's very green. That's interesting. I didn't expect that to happen. So let's go in here and let's start. I'm basically going in and filling in areas where there's more red because that was always meant to be like an underwash, undercoat. That's a very silly color I just created. So much for making desaturated painting. I always say I'm going to do that and it just can't help but use these stronger colors. It can help it. Hmm. Interesting. What about down here? What is it? Well, that's kind of pretty. That's kind of pretty. It's the, th the real thing with paint with the gouache is you got to give it a good 60 seconds before you're going to get a sense of the real color. When it goes down wet, it's nice, and then it dries to something very muted. Muted. Is my live stream still working? I don't even know if anybody's here, because uh, I'd have to switch views of my screen to show, because I only have the chat windows up. It doesn't show like who's live. I'd have to expand the windows to see. Interesting. <sighs> Maybe I have to scroll. No, okay. Oh, okay, this is weird. I can I can sort of, from my peripheral vision, I can see when someone sort of types something up very... So, Juliet said, yes, still here. Rosemary, you're driving? What are you doing? Get off the internet when you're driving, crying out loud. Rosemary, you're driving in your car. What kind of madness is that? I hope you have, like, a Tesla that has, like, a built-in screen that's all hands-free and you're not, like... Oh, I'm driving with my phone, watching some weirdo on the internet. In Ontario, we have a new law. If you are holding a phone, or even like anything, like a cup of coffee, uh, what are the things? Yeah, you hold. If you're holding your phone. Like touching your phone, like more than like just once, like more than just tap. Um, I think it's seven hundred and fifty bucks the first fine. It's like the anti-texting law they call it, but um, my understanding is it applies to pretty much anything that distracts you. So like like you can't eat in your car. Like Jesus, that's a, like drinking a coffee in a car is like the most Canadian thing you can do. Like that's that's sacrilegious. We are when we're when you're born in Canada, you were born with the ability to drive with a coffee in your hand. I'm sorry, that's just. That's just the way it is. Ridiculous. I bought a cool, really cool car uh, phone holder for my car. It's got a, you put a little piece of metal on the back of your phone and it's a magnet and it sticks right to your, your phone sticks right to like your, you know, wherever you place this thing. I highly recommend it. Actually, I like to listen to podcasts and stuff when I'm driving more than the radio I don't even turn the radio on anymore 
I like to listen to because you have the choice. You can immediately just choose what you're interested in. With the radio, it's like passive. You're 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 you know whatever they decide is the subject matter. That's it, and you can change the channel. But there aren't that. It's not like you can just choose anything. So I'll like listen to. I'll put YouTube on, and just listen to whatever uh, is interesting. Now, what am I going to do in the bottom here? This is turning out to be super weird. Okay, uh, the other day I put a, I used magic marker to outline the trees. I might do the same. But in the meantime, I'm just going to get some pencils. This is going to make it just nice when I start doing thicker outlines. I just love that Van Gogh effect. I've always I've always loved this where there's like a heavy outline of a darker color. So I'll just do it on this one tree here. Maybe I'll do a different color, just so there's a bit of contrast. Like there's a little bit. Oh, this is more of a purple. And later I have to go in and fix them up because they're not, not perfect. Like watch this. When I do, wait. There's a bit of wet, still wet paint there, so I can't. Um, what am I gonna? Hey, Shark. Yeah, I remember you. But I can't remember, like, I remember your name and I remember we talked, but um, I'm just trying to remember your specific details. Just because Shark is just, I don't remember these names. And also, I need faces. I need to see pictures of faces. I'm sure once you remind me what we talked about in the past, like, I know that Autistic Bot's a 15-year-old Indian uh, guy in India, or woman, girl or guy. I don't know if you're a girl or guy, whatever, in India. I know that uh, I I know that Mazika, who was just there before, is a student at a college that I teach at, <laughs> which is kind of crazy, and might actually be a student of mine if I'm still teaching in a couple of years there, when when that person gets to be a post grad. I'm the seventh year boy who has as much experience. Oh yeah. I love it. It's awesome. Well, you sounded like me when I was seventeen. You thought you knew. You thought you knew everything. <laughs> you know jack shit, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's hilarious. <laughs> As a fifteen year old, that cracks me up, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, listen. It's important to be confident. Just don't get too cocky. I I was too cocky. That was my my damn flaw. I dated probably the most gorgeous woman you can possibly imagine. And somehow I thought I could do better. <laughs> she eventually dumped me. And then I kind of was like, whoa, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I I would be like, I remember one time we were sitting, we went to McDonald's. And we were sitting at St. Clair and Bathurst. And some little lady walks by and goes, that girl is very gorgeous. You better be nice to her. I'm like, what do you mean? You're like, I'm the shit. <laughs> I remember that so clearly. It's true. She was like so mind-blowingly gorgeous gorgeous that I remember even just looking at her and, and like being blinded she was so beautiful and I was your age you young punk <laughs> so I learned the lesson not to be too cocky all right how about if we put some black in here let's try this let's put some black in here get some darkness Darkness. That's funny. I love stories like that. I mean, your story. The, the, I'm the seventeen-year-old guy who thinks he knows about. What was it you wrote? As much experience, woman experience as a fifty-year-old. <laughs> funny. <laughs> that is some funny stuff. Yeah. Highly unlikely. 
one thing I know is I'm constantly learning new things all the time. Things you think you know, but you don't know. And then someone proves you wrong. And then, but I think it's it's true. Sometimes when you're young, you just you think you know what the hell's going on. Life, life has its own rules for you. I'm just the weird lady that gets inspired by your art. <laughs> right on. That's cool. That black didn't. That was not good. I don't like that. The black kind of sucked. Sucked bananas right there. I don't like that at all. It just looks dirty and messy. Okay. Um. What about? I'm telling you. Uh, well, that's not good. Oh. If oh right, you're in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember talking. Womanizers. That's not good, man. That's nothing to be proud of. You might think it's a good thing, but that usually stems from an insecurity. Also, probably you're busting full of hormones that are driving you to the procreation process, which are. I wouldn't say blinding, but obfuscating, which are maybe you thinking things that, what I'm trying to say, don't be a womanizer. That's not going to help anybody. It's not going to help you in the long run. It's not healthy. I had friends who were absolutely womanizers. You could say when we were growing up, it was all they wanted to do was go out, pick up girls. And uh, it was it was so monotonous and boring. And it was just like, I don't know. That was just never me. That was just like, it was embarrassing. And there was a couple guys who were like complete playboys, man. Like there was, like it, it, like it was just, it got to be so boring. I just didn't want to go with them anymore. Because all they want to do is just, it's like, okay, I get it. Like it's like, yeah, I, Girls are awesome. And they're great and fun, but I, like, I don't know. It felt slimy. That's what it was. It felt shallow and slimy and like, like. Uh, also, too, man. I, I also, like I said, my girlfriend was like, I was madly in love with her. So I was just like, couldn't think of like what a what a more waste of time. And this was a probably like maybe we were on a break still. I just didn't care. It's kind of like I experienced something that was so much deeper than just trying to pick somebody up. That uh, it just had no, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I thought it meant I can flirt with all the girls. No, womanizer means basically, yeah. So if you looked it up, yeah, maybe, so I'm glad it's just a language translation thing. Yeah, womanizer is not a positive thing. It means you basically are uh, someone who treats women like objects and uh, just complete just sexualizes them. And it's it's not uh, it's where, where where I'm from. This just it's definitely not a, a positive thing. It's nothing to be proud of. So maybe what you could say is I don't know what you'd say. I was trying to say that I click with everyone, all girls, basically. Well, that's good. Yeah, me too. I was like that too. <laughs> I think I got my confidence because whenever I go out, I I literally never tried picking anybody up, and I think that was. People would sort of come to me, and it was weird. It was like I, I, I would, uh, I'd really piss off some of my friends who were trying so hard, and I'd just be sitting back, going, "Ah, just chill out, just have fun and stuff." And all of a sudden, it was like a weird magnet, you know, thing. I think that's that's the key: is you just treat people like you treat, even if you're attracted to someone, just treat them like a like a regular person. But there are some people that are messed up in that uh, they will be attracted to shallowness. Like, for example, that whole idea of being a bad boy thing is 100% true. Like, women are – not women, some women, but in general, like, they're definitely if – you're, if you're too nice, that's not a good thing because it's just – I don't – you know, there's there's all kinds of probably analysis of this. But you have to be a little bit of a bad boy. You have to be a little bit of a aloof if you're going to play that game. Because it's true. I remember being like, when I was the most aloof, it was like, 
it was a weird thing or you know ugh. I'm just glad I'm the age right now where I don't I don't I don't have to play those games. You know. It's also true like I you know, as you get older, your, your hormones change. You know, I don't I don't have the same r raging hormones that would drive me to do stupid shit like you do when you're your age. I'm way more chill now, man. It's like I could I could meet the most drop dead beautiful woman in the world, and I'd be like, "Yeah, hey, all right, whatever, man. Don't care." <laughs> it's kind of nice feeling. It's a liberating feeling not to have, not to be controlled by hormones, because <laughs> it's true. Like. The hormones that go through your body really push you to do stupid things, make dumb decisions. It's much more, it's much more lucid now. Like I would much rather just honestly hang with my dog on a Saturday night. Like that, that to me is like happy. I'm happy when I'm just hanging out with my dog. That's 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 awesome to me. <laughs> Okay, what am I gonna do with the? Maybe I'll just do like browns. Oh, I do have browns right here. Wonder. Treat the person the way you'd like to be treated. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent, exactly. You got it. The other thing too is I, I try to treat everyone the same, which means if you could be the damn pope or the queen, I'm not going to bow down to you. I'll treat you the same as I would some dude who's, who's begging at Tim Hortons. That's that's important to me. I wonder, oh, maybe I should do some more gray. Maybe I should put some on this stupid bus thing. Whatever. I thank you. <laughs> I forget what was that for. What, I, what was that? A, uh, oh, that's for following. Okay, cool. I thank you. Right on, Paul. Paul, one, two, three, six, six. <laughs> I thank you. Suppose I should start painting this. I've been putting this, putting this thing off for some time. I thank you. Okay, I'm okay. Sheila says, "Me too." I hang with my cat. I love cats too, man. Uh, after five. 55 year common law boyfriends I've had enough of men after five maybe five year nah women are fucked guys are awesome <laughs> actually actually I'm friends with everybody okay oh thank you your cat's right I had a cat once by default I had a friend she is gorgeous, my friend. I had such a crush on her. For years we flirted. Like, we flirted for years and years. And I'm glad we never got together because she's such a hilarious, awesome person. She's a bit of a celebrity, so I won't mention her name. She is like one of the other drop-dead drop gorgeous women in my life, man. Oh, my God. she's She is kind of well-known. So I won't say who it is. But... She had a friend. We used to work out. Oh, my God. We used to flirt like crazy. And we knew it, too. Oh, she was a... Whatever the female version of Womanizer is, she was the man version. Uh, the female version. She would, like, go through guys. like <laughs> You know they talk about, like, guys are pigs now. Women are just, if not more, <laughs> brutal when, when they're... At least some. some are, like, we're always very, like, open and honest with each other. That's what I liked about her. You know... Point is, was I going to tell a story? Oh, yeah, the cat story. She had a friend who was going to go to Hawaii for two weeks. And her friend was looking for someone to look after her cat. I said, sure, what the? Why not? I'll look after your cat. 
and the cat's name was Sydney. And Sydney plays a big, the name plays a big part in my family. Like everyone's name is Sydney in my family. So kind of a weird kind of thing. Anyhow, uh, she never came back. She went to Hawaii and stayed, and so I ended up adopting this cat, and I had her for like nine years. I loved that fucking cat. I used to sleep on my chest. I'd wake up, and the thing was like, a, like an inch from my face, like on my chest, purring, with this, you know, the nose is just like right millimeters from my my nose. <laughs> oh, I love Sydney. Fucking someone ran her over. She got loose once out of the house. A neighbor came back on the door. Says Sydney's outside, and I ran outside. And she was like. Basically smushed and she died in my arms. God, I love that cat. Fuck. I never would have thought of getting a cat before it wasn't for Sydney. But I love I love animals, man. I love dogs. I even like birds. I once had a parrot. I love that goddamn parrot. I always thought it was a male. It turns out it was a female. Because <laughs> their genitalia is internal, so you never know really what sex they are. Not that it mattered. But I named my parrot Moses <laughs> so, and Moses died the day sorry an hour before my last exam at university oh that was horrible she died of a heart attack she had apparently had eaten some plastic and birds have something called a crop which is like a, a stomach before their stomach and the plastic had accumulated like in her crop and basically, just eventually, her heart gave out. Because I had an autopsy. That's how I found out it was a girl. <laughs> I had an autopsy to find out what the hell happened to my parrot. Because these things were supposed to live like 50 years. And it was severely imprinted on me. It would call my name. It would always need to be near me. It had to be up my shoulder, looking me right in the face. My cat is a Maine Coon extraordinaire. I have no idea what that means. The only, the only type of cat I know about is a calico. Because my girlfriend had a calico. And they're like orange and black and white or something. So... I don't know jack shit about cats, like what, or Siamese cats. I know Siamese cats. I don't know what a marine. I have a friend just down the street, and they had one of those ugly cats. Oh man, it was so ugly, but fascinating. Like it's like it looked like it was a whore. It looked like it was something that. Do you remember the movie The Fly with Jeff Goldblum? When you step in the machine and he came out and there was he was mutated with the fly, that's what the cat looked like. It had like one eye googly over here with weird hairs and all like skin was like there's no fur in half of it. It was just like this disgusting, gross, lovable, horrible creature. <laughs> I love that thing. That's the kind of cat I would get. Just like something like just it was a horror a horror movie cat. <laughs> but it was so friendly. I love that thing. So I don't know what the kind of cat that is. All right, so what am I going to do with the bottom part? Let me look. I don't, the red's got to go. Maybe orange? Uh, brown? Yeah. I'm going to get a German Shepherd. I fucking love German Shepherds. And Gold Retrievers. Those are the two most awesome dogs in the world and the most sheddiest dogs, too. One of my best friends had a, a German Shepherd growing up. And holy Christ, was that house always <sighs> hair piles everywhere. I think it's, it wasn't in the, not the most, how do you even describe it? Not the most, um, I don't know how you say blue collar existence. Like his dad was a bit of a. Bohemian, always broke, never had money. He was like a hippie musician, sort of, photographer. Lovable guy, but just like po poverty. That's what I said. He kind of grew up, it was a poverty kind of, you know, and I don't know why he never fucking cleaned up the dog hair everywhere. Matisse. That's what the dog's name. I love Matisse. She was a beautiful girl. But holy shit, she was terrifying. If you didn't know her, my God. Like, if you came up to the house, like, you would be fucking freaking out because that thing was just, Argh! but as soon as she recognized you, like, you know, she was just, like, a biggest baby, biggest suck. He actually went and eventually got a Rottweiler, who I also then fell in love with Rottweilers. In fact, Rottweilers are some of my favorite dogs now. At the dog park, there's a couple of Rottweilers, and they're so friendly. Like, you can't, they are so sucky. 
And what they do is like there's two rollers at my dog park, and what you do is is once they get to know you, they're just they cling to you. And I scratch one of the one of the ones, um, Stella, her name is Stella, scratch her ass, and then she starts grab. You think she's like t- like it's like er er er, and that's just her happy sound. <laughs> so here I am in the dog park. People think something's going on because everyone like is always hyper aware in the dog park if there's dog fights. But Stella, this big rottweiler, er, 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 and it's just me scratching her ass. <laughs> So that's how I got to learn to love these dogs. That and I had another friend who lived in Florida had a had a um, Doberman, and I never liked Dobermans. Just they looked like they're just they never looked like a, like a snuggly type of dog because they're until I got to know her, and she was also super terrifying if you didn't know her. But the biggest suck of a dog ever, like uh, it would sit with half its ass on the couch. <laughs> So all these dogs that you think are like crazy, the only ones I've never been a, f- a fan of is, is uh, Pipples. I don't know why. There's something about their mouth that fucking like just, if, if you know the power of these things have, like once they latch on, the problem, oh, I know part of the problem with I have with Pipples is it, it's 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 a uh, part of their physiology is that once they l- latch onto something, they actually have trouble delatching. So if they grab onto you, they may not even intentionally mean to like keep holding Whereas something like a, a German Shepherd, they're much more trainable and like they they can actually detach. So there's 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 like uh, you could watch like these videos of, of um, pipples like grabbing onto like a rope and they're just hanging there because they can't release. Atticas are my favorite. I don't know what's an Attica. Oh, I love bulldogs too. I love bulldogs. I love bulldogs. I love pugs. I love Frenchies. Frenchies are a stupid name, but I love Frenchies. They're just there's a a Frenchie in my dog park that loves me. Here's my quick Frenchie story. This one dog um, is it, it, if you sit on the bench, it always goes for your face, right? So what I do, like when you play football, you you put like a little triangle to catch. That's how you catch a football. Like when you're learning to play football, and so I was prepared for. I think this. Yeah, it's also Stella. So there's two Stellas. One is the the Frenchie and one's the uh, Rottweiler. But now this is Stella, the, the Frenchie. It would always go right for my face. So I had my football hands ready to catch it. And Stella went, boom, right in my chest. And and, had, and I had this perfect circle of a wet spot. Because it always had like a wet face where Stella went right here. Attica, Attica. I'll have to. I'll have to look it up. Actually, let's let's just take a quick second break and let's look up Attica because I like learning about these things. Okay, Attica. Attica. Where is it? A. Oh, Ack. Like my my eyes are are going. I gotta get glasses. A K I. T A S. Let's look at these dogs. Oh yeah! Look at this guy's face. Those are cool. If that's not a Attica, that looks like a, a Ibushinu, Shibuinu, whatever. Ah, uh, are they kind of a sheep? Wait a second. Yeah, that guy looks cute. Look at that big head on that guy. This looks like a Shibuinu. The only thing that I like about those type of dogs is their asses are too. They just they have their ass. I don't want to look at a dog's butthole. It's just not as nice. <laughs> That's the only problem I have with with these type of breeds is I just don't want to look at the butthole all the time. <laughs> you know, put the butthole down. <laughs> but look how cute this guy is. Ah, okay, what did you say? Akita, Akita. Oh, that sounds Japanese. Akita. Choto ni anga hashimasu. Oh. Akita. That sounds very Japanese. Well, Shibu Inus, uh, for some reason, are popular in Japan. Wait, Shibu Inu? That sounds very Japanese, too. Akita. Cool. Wow, they're very different. Like, look at this one. Look how... The face looks almost like a Newfoundlander over here. Oh, look at this guy. This guy looks like very German Shepherd. Yeah, it looks like there's, I guess, the strands, variations. Like, this is 
very German Shepherd. Akita is my favorite. They bond with you for life. It's weird that this text just showed up now on Facebook. Okay. All right. Let's go back to uh, painting. Let's put this. Let's put this here. Boop. Go back to D Live so I can read text. Um, a common Japan. This makes me think of a movie. What movie is it? You guys know what I mean. Oh, I don't wait. Oh, I missed a bunch of text. I like the color. Wait. So cute. Looks like Shibu Inu's. Yes, Ak Akita's and Shibu's are common in Japan. This makes me think of a movie. What movie is it? The man dies and the dogs come back to the train station. Hachiko. Huh. I don't know that one. Oh, if you're into Japanese movies, I can tell you. I was into this, well, probably a long time ago. But I'll, I'll tell you. that. Let me look up this one movie first, and then I'll tell you about this other series of movies, which are totally awesome. Oh, look, over here on Facebook. Okay, so just so you know, on DLive, where is it? You guys, so Mui Moon said Hachiko, and over here, Melissa says Hachi. I wonder if it's the same movie you guys are thinking about. That sounds cool. Okay, let me look it up. H H A C H I K Hachiko. Oh wait, Hachiko. Wait, over here. Hachi. Wait about him. Oh, okay, Hachiko movie. Because I'm in, okay. This is probably the one you're talking about. A heart-touching story of Hachiko, full movie. Yeah, that'll make me cry away. I don't need to start crying over a goddamn... Dogs are probably one of the things that make that can make me really cry. I love dogs. I fucking love dogs. Okay, let me t tell you about something that's really awesome. Toshiro Mifun. Uh, this guy is like the Clint Eastwood of Japanese actors. And he plays... Samurais, and he's the most badass guy ever. So for a while, I was kind of really into Toshiro Mifun, the actor, and the director's Ahiro Kurosawa, who did some fantastic movies. Like, I got some cool stuff. Like, did you know the Magnificent Seven was based on the Seven Samurai? Um, one of the Star Wars movies was based on the Hidden Fortress, which is a Ahiro Kurosawa movie. Like. Ahiro Kurosawa was a wicked director. He also did Ran. But look at this guy, Toshiro Mifun. T-O-R. I started watching him when I was in Japan. Me. This guy is super badass. He's cool. He's like the one of the coolest guys that ever lived. This guy here. Toshiro Mifun. Man, I like to be like him. He is so cool. So he's an actor, Japanese actor, and he would he did um he usually played kind of like a bit of a a renegade anti-hero hero and al almost always a samurai and man i highly recommend checking him out toshiro mifun fucking badass this guy so cool so toshiro mifun check him out and also a hero kurosawa i haven't watched these guys in a long time a hero kurosawa i can't i don't know how to spell his name Akira, Akira Kurosawa. So this guy. Okay, so The Hidden Fortress was one of his movies, and I believe Empire Strikes Back is based on it. Seven Samurai is what this the the Magnificent Seven classic ca cowboy movie is based on. Um. So if you're into, there's something about his movies. Well, I want to see. Yeah. I don't know why I'm getting so excited about this, but I think I, I might have to go back and watch some of his movies. Man, some of them were just so... Uh, I can't... Okay, let's see. Here we saw 10 essential films. Let's see which ones. God, I'm just trying to remember the names of the ones I just loved. And I kind of felt like I discovered this by myself. Like I never... No one had ever told me about it, heard about it, and I felt like I just discovered something. No Regrets for Our Youth. I don't know that one. The Scandal. Oh, look how modern that one is. Okay, this one sounds familiar. Rashomon, that sounds familiar. Um, Ikuru, yep, for sure. Seven Samurai, that's a classic. This is sort of like the penultimate Toshiro Mifun Ahira Kurosawa. Totally worth checking out. Seven Samurai, Throne of Blood, badass movie. Yojimbo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is the one where he's like the happy-go-lucky guy. I don't know this one. Ran is a classic. This is sort of like... Uh, what ran? I kind of remember being like very epic, 
kind of like um, Torah Torah, like just very dramatic cinematography with amazing colors. I don't remember this one, Mad Ayo. Anyhow, why am I even talking about this? I just I kind of got excited on this stuff. Okay, let me move these back. I'll put them here in case the subject comes up again. Pew, and I'll go back to here. All right. Hachi made me cry so bad I feel for the dog. And it's a true movie too. Yeah, he has a statue as well. Yep. Okay, well, that sounds cool. I'm kind of in the mood for a, a good movie. I haven't seen a good movie in a while. Okay, where was I? What I could do... Let's try putting some brown on the ground. Let's see where that goes. Oh, that's not the right color. I want burnt umber. Deep magenta. That's too purple. Where are you, burnt umber? Raw umber is going to be a little bit lighter, which is still not bad. I could use that. That actually looks good. That looks like chocolate. Mm. This looks like you want to eat it. Where is this burnt umber? Look at this. Wait, let me turn off the auto focus. And I'll show you how what this totally looks good. Auto focus disabled. Okay. Look at this brown. I don't know if you can see. Oh, it doesn't look as delicious as it does in real life. Well, there, there it is. It's look. It looks like this amazing, delicious chocolate that you want to go. Ah. All right. Auto focus enabled. Continue painting. Shutting up. Okay. Yep, I'm gonna check out that movie. But since gouache is being gouache, it's just not coming out as luster as oils. I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking forward to going back to oils. Although I got some, cr this is, this is crazy. This is really fucking. This stuff gets me exciting. I went to my parents' house yesterday, and my mom was an artist, and I went into the basement. Oh shit! And they kind of have some old art supplies. How can I show this to you? What's the best way to show it? So I got a bunch of little palettes, which I could use because I've been using cups. a sketchbook, which is nice to have. But it's this. This is gold. I put it in plastic. This is incredible. These have been in my parents' basement for maybe more than 25 years. I was looking at this and going, what are these things? These are... The heaviest stock water paper color, water paper I've ever seen. It's, you can't, I can't, like, I don't know if I can show you how thick this is. Oh, I'd have to switch cameras. Anyhow, each of these sheets easily is, is 20, maybe, is easily 20 bucks. Each of these sheets. And there's like one, four, five, maybe 15. And uh, this is like, because uh, I was talking to my mom about them. She said, oh yeah, I've had those for years because we were talking about how expensive the watercolor paper I like to use costs. Archie's is the brand I use. And, and like something like this for 20, like I, I could, you couldn't even buy this, this size. I was looking at uh, 18 by 20, no, 16 by 20 in Archie's for 20 sheets was like $200. This has got to be, um, I don't know, I'd have to measure it, but it looks like it's about a f 18 by 30 or something. And each page is so thick, it's unbelievable. So this is, I'm looking at, this is like several hundred dollars worth of like high, super high quality water paper color. So because of this, I might be doing more gouaches. Like I, this thing is heavy. I don't even know how many pounds. So they, they measure uh, uh, paper like um, in pounds. And the stuff I was using was like 300 pounds. And this is something I've never even heard of. So... I don't even, my mom doesn't remember where she got it. She, she's had it, like she said, about 25 years. Let me, um, let me uh, switch cameras so I can just show you the thickness of this thing. Here's one sheet. I don't know if you can see that. Wow. At first I thought it was, um, at first I thought it was, uh, just mounting, like mounting boards. Like when you get, uh, before you, uh, 
get a, like a water or a, pa a paper thing framed, you put on a mounting board and they put the frame around it. But this is actually the thickest water color paper I've ever seen in my life. And I thought I've seen everything. Like you go to an art store, I don't even think you can buy that. Like I don't, I don't even recognize it. It's crazy. So, but it's also so big. I'm not sure how it's going to work in a setup down here because this this painting here is 10 by 14 it's quite small i do like i do like this because this is very comfortable i get to sit down sorry what's the weight more than 300 um well let me sh let me show you uh, i'll get this one out so this is what i'm using right now this one is 140 pounds. I, I'm I'm a imperial. I don't know metric at all. Like I couldn't even tell you how much I weigh in kilograms or meters or whatever. So I always go by the pound. 140 pounds. The other stuff I bought for I think was 300 300 pounds. I think actually I took a picture of my phone so I can be sure. And this is the one I'm working on right now, and I don't like it. I really it's it's much thinner, and they're individual sheets, so you have to deal with like sticking them down. It was so I only bought it because. It's the same brand and the same size. There were two two products. There was one this plus the same one where the logo was this way. And I thought, oh my god, this is half the price. I'm gonna get it. Like you know, Amazon fucked up. You know, this was uh, I want to say forty bucks for twenty sheets. I'd have to go and look. And the other one was like like a hundred dollars or something for twenty sheets or something like ninety dollars, something crazy. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to get the cheaper one. And it showed up and it was, uh, that's why it was freaking uh, not the yeah, individual sheets. So that was my mistake. I've only ever gotten the one where the logo is this way. And the difference here. So no one ever makes mis this mistake. I'll, I'm going to go to Amazon. Let's just let's just do this right now. No one, no one makes the same dumb mistake I did. So oh, let's go to top. Let's go to Amazon. I'm going to go to, by the way, I'm talking about Canadian dollars, not freedom units. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so this is the one I got right here. So that was, uh, yeah, so this is one I got. It was like the, the Amazon's choice. So it was 29 bucks for um, how many sheets? Sometimes they come in like less than 12. Yeah, okay. This is $28 for 12 sheets. So that's so I was right. It's like 50 bucks for 20. So I think you can choose 20. Uh, yeah, so it's only, tw is this 12? Yeah, so I only got 12 sheets. So this is 10 by 14 for 12 sheets of 140 gram, uh, pounds. And I like hot pressed. It depends on what kind of style you're going for. So I do hot press, which is slight, usually slightly more expensive. Cold press is more expensive. 28 85 2855. Yeah. Usually hot price is really more expensive. Okay. So this is what I ordered thinking I was getting a deal. Instead, let's find the 10 by 14. Watch this. It's really deceptive. Okay, so here's 10 by 14. Three. This is what I thought I was getting. It's uh for 10 pieces, $67. Oh here, wait, no, that's that's it's gonna be more than that's cold pressed, cold pressed, hot pressed. Yeah, here's the one I thought I was so I was comparing this one. This this is the 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 prices are all over the map. Look at this. This is for 20 sheets is $73. I thought I was getting this, but instead I bought this because it was it, it hot pressed 10 by 14, same pounds, 140 pounds. But the other one, this is the one I, I'd, I'd strongly recommend over the one I just got, which is this. Because these were all stuck together, mounted together in, in a board. And what I wanted to do is I actually found, what I was painting on the last batch I had was um, 16 by 20. And this is what I was, I forgot how expensive these were. 16, because I, I haven't done gouache in like 15, 20 years, and I hadn't bought this stuff in a long time. Okay, so Archie's 16 by 20. For let's look for the hot one. Okay, it was even hard to find. Sixteen by twenty cold press is a for for twenty sheets. Now this is weird because it's square. It should be this is I didn't buy this for a couple reasons. First of all, one hundred fucking twenty dollars for twenty pieces of paper. Also, it's showing a square aspect ratio, but it says six by twenty. And, and you know, are you really going to return it? 
So that's what I was painting on before. So each sheet is a couple bucks. You don't want to screw up. Um, let me just do some quick math here. If I was to buy the one I wanted, is I can't. I don't think I. I don't think I could even find it. No, I couldn't even find. It. Maybe I'll go to Amazon.com. One second. The problem with Amazon.com is that I may not be able to get it in Canada, or I pay some stupid um, amount for shipping. Like you pay eight bucks for shipping or something. Okay. Okay. So this is, I think, the one I want. No, I could. 16 by. They don't even have it. Damn it. Yeah. And this is the problem I had before is I couldn't even find it. You'd think Amazon would have everything, but they didn't. Yeah. All right. Paint on that side. You bought soft paper. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if it's called. I don't know if it's soft paper. It's just. It's just. The main thing is that it's not attached, right? You don't want to. Don't want to do this. Oh, we got some. Okay. Um. What about Gortzmans? Well, first of all, uh, Gortzmans might. I haven't checked with them. I'm actually going to be ordering. I got a commission to do a, a really large painting, so I got to order some stuff for them. So I'll check with them. Uh, but I did call a couple. Of, like for me, I, I, that means I got to go downtown. And parking on Spadine is a pain in the ass. And there's other art stores that are closer to me. So um, I only go to Gortzman's when I need to do a good shop. Like it's also a pain in the ass too, because there's no place to park to put your stuff in. So I always get like one of the dudes to help me bring it out. Um, yeah. So for those who know, Gortzman's is like a is like a really old, well known art art supply store in Toronto. It's been around forever. So since I've been alive, it was one of the places I've always gone to. And they're known for being the prices are very good, um, but the quality you have to be smart. You have to know your shit to go to Gortzman's because they do have some really crappy quality stuff. Like if you don't know canvas as well, they got some very good deals on on shitty canvases uh, from China. Like you have to know. You have to know how thick, you have to know how uh, the stretchers are, are built. You have to know like how much glue and how they're, how they're put together. You have to know like, um, for example, cross crossbars for support should be put in at a certain distance. And like, to be honest, I've just spent so many years with them. I, I couldn't even say it. I just know when I pick something up, I can tell if it's quality, you can tap the canvas, see how tight it is. You just, there's all this shit. So uh, Gorsman's is good, and I do shop there a lot, actually. In fact, um, most of my large canvases I got from there. And uh, I talked to – there's one particular guy I talked to who, who I've gotten to know so that I don't waste any more time. Like he already knows the, the type of stuff I'm looking for. And uh, and uh, the only problem is I have to have them delivered. So because you have to pay for delivery, um, I uh, tend to shop in a big batch. What the hell am I talking about? Oh, yeah, so Archie's. Well, I, I, I'd be surprised if they had it. I called Curry's. I called uh, Above Ground. Um, and I didn't call Gortzman's just simply because even if they had it, I didn't want to go down. Oh, what happened was I just ran out like about a week or so ago and it was like a Thursday night and I, I really don't like traveling places. Like I would rather just not go somewhere. So I was on Amazon and I figured Amazon would have everything because they usually are really good with everything, really having all products. And that night I found that those and they were delivered the next day. So it's not, so it was just simply a matter of me. Um, I didn't call them because it was nighttime, and I just wanted to have something to paint because I forgot I was didn't realize I ran out so quickly. Holy shit, am I jabbering? Like, believe it or not, I really don't talk much in real life. <laughs> I really, I could, I'd be happy to being quiet for days. <laughs> Fuck, I'm just rambling on. Oh man, that is funny. <laughs> I think it's because I have so many things going on in my head that it's almost pointless to try to get it out because by the time I have a thought out of my head, I've already moved on to something else. And I don't think anyone really cares that much what I'm thinking about, so I just don't bother talking. <laughs> 
I gave up. <laughs> See, this is what I hate. I put double-sided tape down. I just wanted the corner to stay. My little trick, you know, didn't work. Popped up. Oh. Pop. Quartzmans, Quartzmans, Quartzmans. Quartzmans also is notorious for having like rude ass people that work there. I think they were just, I think it was, the people who work with Gorsman's were like broke-ass art students. And usually people can afford art supplies aren't broke-ass art students. So you get some like, someone like me coming in who drops like a few hundred dollars in art supplies and they're just resentful and like, you probably are a shitty artist anyhow. And so they're just they're just like... Yeah, they're in the back. Go look. They're probably being paid minimum wage or whatever. But it was part of the charm. Gortzman's, to me, made me feel like what New York would have felt like. Where people are, they're rude, but it's not like they're being offensive. It's like, you should just suck it up. And that's, you know, that's how I imagine New York would be. Like, you want a pizza? Okay. What do, what, what do you want? Come on. What slice do you want? Pepperoni? Make up your mind. Let's go. You know? But they're not, they're not honestly being rude it's just sort of like just that's the way things are and that's kind of the way Gortzman was for a long time so i was never never offended by it i i, I always thought it was hilarious like eh, go in the back go look <laughs> i loved it and i was there not too long ago and there's a little bit of an attitude but they seem to be nicer Where there was a Wolfitz was another place I used to go to. They moved though, and Wolfitz was a bit more, a bit more expensive. Wolfitz. Oh, uh, there's another one. Oh, I'm just trying to remember the name. This is going back many years ago. Loomis and Tolls kind of felt like a stationary store. It never felt like. I walked in and it was just too organized. That's what I liked about Gortzman's. It was like you're walking into like a shambles. Like there's just shit everywhere on the floor and you're like, it's like you're discovering something. Then you go to Lumis and Tolls and it feels like a, feels like staples. Like everything's very well organized and efficiently run and stuff. And then Curry's is somewhere in between. And uh, yeah. Michaels Michaels do I know Michaels Michaels art store hmm where's Michaels art store I gotta look this, I gotta look this up I'm just gonna go to the desktop so you don't so you can actually see what I'm doing and I'm not wasting anyone's time here Wait, that, this is weird. Look at this Facebook. Oh, I missed it. That actor looks like my cousin. I'll have to share the photo with his wife. Oh. Zuani, are you Japanese, man? Okay, all right, let's, uh, Michael's Art Store. That sounds familiar. I thought I knew everything about art and drawing. M-I-C-H-A-E-L's Art Store Toronto S T O R E. Oh, there's three of them here. Art Michaels, huh? Where Scarborough, North York? Interesting. Let me look at the website. Maybe if I see the website, I'll know it. The logo looks somewhat familiar. 
how do I select? Hmm. I don't know. Let's look up. Uh, uh, what is it I'm looking up? Archies. Let's see how much. Okay, this is the one I bought. But I, I bought the uh, hot press. This is the cold press one. Let's see how much they charge. Where's the price? Does it say out of stock even? That's weird. That's weird. I don't see a price. I'd expect to see at least like, you know, not on sale or something. What are related products? Huh. Hey, this is the this is the um the same This is the same thing that I I stole from my parents' house. I stole this. I stole this from them. And that looks like this one. Let's see how much it cost. Oh, come on. Seriously? Yeah. Cost. This is 100, okay, 98 pounds, 60 sheets. Do you see 60 sheets? It's uh, 14 by 17. That's not even on here. But what is that is so weird they don't show the prices. No, I've never I've n I don't think I've ever bought shopped at Michaels before. But I, I don't like the fact they don't show prices. I wonder if these products just aren't in sale. You didn't put in if you're a US or Canadian. Yeah, I did. At the beginning it, it, it's it, at the very beginning it it asked see, welcome to Michaels Canada. I um, at the, I don't know if you noticed it, but it said Canada US English French and I pressed the the English. Okay. Um, weird. Where are the prices? Uh, like, what's the point of having a, a store if you don't show the prices? Maybe it's just by some weird chance they're out. Of, they're not out of stock. Well, see, that's not good, man. Uh, how the fuck can you not put prices on? A, are the prices on the main page? Okay, what's new? Projects, products. Let's go to art supplies. Oh, bakery decor. Oh, maybe that's why I don't I don't go to Michael's because it looks like it's not just an art store. It has like all kinds of crafts and shit. I find that these kinds of stores they don't usually have the best prices when they when they're and also the yeah. So I like to go to maybe I don't know maybe it's just one of those things where I like to go to art stores where they're very focused on art supplies because sometimes I learn things by talking to the people there who are also very focused. Oh, pick a location. Um, well, where are locations? Find products, store directory, store locator. Okay, so that's possible they didn't pick the store location. Okay, so let's pick the one downtown, John Street. Uh, how do I, how do I even get there? I don't want directions. I don't care about events. I can't pick it, so I don't see the, how this helps me at all. Like I'll go to weekly ad Pshit. yeah i don't snap nah. now i guess the reason why is because like i said i like to go to art stores where typically the people that work there know a lot about specific products related to art and I'm, they might suggest something i don't know and i kind of like that I mean, it seems they're more, yeah, because when you're like into art yourself, which most people who work at art stores are, like I constantly am learning new stuff. Like um, one thing I've been wanting to get into is painting on panels. I thank you. Oh, thank you. Somebody else followed. Cool. My, me, mo, zero, zero, zero. Woo. Um, panels. Yeah, painting on panels. Because the downside about painting on canvases is, is I hate packing and shipping paintings. I hate it. It takes me like, maybe because of my paintings are typically larger, like anything more than 40 by 60. And I, you know, I have to build like, you have to build like a wooden crate, you know, and it costs, it costs like a thousand dollars to send it. And like, you have to charge people like, you know, here's a thousand bucks just for shipping it to, you know, fucking Texas or something. Because you have to, you have to build these things, you know, and they're heavy and stuff. And but 
you know, even even a painting that's like it cost me what 200 300 bucks to ship a painting to California that wasn't even that large, you know. And all, but the main thing is, I just hate the process of packing it with a bubble wrap and sheets, and you know, and, and you know, I I tend to go a little bit further than I need to because I want to make sure it arrives safely. Um, and believe it or not, even like uh, even the stickers are expensive. Like each little fragile sticker, like I have a huge roll of them, but they're still like fifty cents each, and you have to put like eight of them on. So just for stickers, you're spending like four bucks just to put a couple stickers on. But you know, um. I could easily spend a hundred bucks just on the supplies, just on the materials to pack a medium-sized painting, and then depending on where it's shipped to, it can be a few hundred bucks. But it's also my time. It's such a pain in the ass because because I you know you never you never have exactly what you need on in store. Like I have like I've got sheets of packing like special paper that goes that you put down on your painting before you put the wrap. Like so I have these huge fucking rolls of wrap of like it's basically a saran wrap. And you need like uh, tons of packing tape and you need bubble wrap. And the other thing too, which I do is uh, I discovered I use insulation from Home Depot, which is about uh, three quarters of an inch thick and it's very sturdy and it provides a, uh, <laughs> it provides a very strong base. So, so it helps keep it from breaking. But that stuff comes only comes in in it's like what like ten foot sheets, so you so somehow like you strap that shit to the top of your car and you drive from Home Depot. You get it home. You gotta somehow cut it, cut the stuff up with Exacto blade. And little little bits of the white styrofoam duster floating everywhere, and uh, you need like a big space to do packing because like if you got a big like some of my paintings are quite large, you know they take up a lot of space and and and. Uh, I have, to, I have to, for even the medium paints, I have to build a custom boxes. There's no boxes you can buy that are perfect fits because of, you just, they just, you know, they just don't come exactly how you want. You know, inevitably, I always have to build my own. So you have to sort of do, bit of, sort of like this engineering origami with these large cardboard boxes. And I usually do double, double cardboard boxes, like two, two layers thick. So you have to count for the extra quarter inch thick, no, uh, yeah, quarter inch thickness that expands everywhere, and you get to do. And you oh, you also have to do corners. I don't know if people know this, but I have piles of pre-built corners, which is you take cardboard and you you uh, it's like it's like three sided cardboard that's stuck together, and you put it on the edge on all one, two, three, four, five, eight corners to prevent bumping. So it's like a Huge pain in the ass. <laughs> That's why, I like, uh, I'm like, I like, I only, I usually like, <laughs> I only want to sell to people locally, so they can just pick it up. I don't have to. I'd, I'd rather drive it over to someone's house than, than uh, even if they lived a little bit outside of the city, than have to pack it up. Because it can take me a whole day to pack a painting. Like, imagine that you spend a day just packing, and you got to run over to like cargo cabbie or whatever local home depot to get that you know you run out of you just run out of packing tape so you have to spend like another 45 minutes picking up that one little thing and if you're me you have to have a nap I don't even know what the hell I've been talking about the past half an hour. I'm just rambling on. What time is it? Ramble on. Dun, 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 dun. That's Led Zeppelin. Oops. Fuck. I oh, won't. Well. Sort of sketch out where I think the windows might go. <laughs> I think the streetcar needs a wash. Well, eventually, I was my original idea was to make it like an abandoned streetcar. 
And the problem I had with that was I know I would end up copying a photograph rather than try to make something original. Because it's very, you know, to make something look original, you need a really good reference. You either have to have like a photographic memory. I have a semi-photographic memory, not fully. I can remember things I... I have visual memories of things when I was a little kid and uh, a lot of like, especially with paintings, I have a really good visual memory where I can just recall things instantly as far as uh, some artwork is concerned. So that's kind of like helpful, I think, but not, not fully, but not good enough where I can, um, I can pull off things like knowing exactly how nature would, would treat something. Like if, if this was an abandoned thing, where the rust would be like, I don't, I don't, I don't have that ability. So, yeah. Um, okay, so if I'm going to make the streetcar, I'm not going to make the lights on. So I'm not going to put lights. Let's just start mapping some stuff out here. Maybe. Yeah, I just want to fix up these trees and make these a bit nicer. I think it'd be interesting to have a photographic memory, like real, like where you can just recall things like you can look at you can just be looking at something in your mind and it's exactly like there are, there are people that have that and there's a possibility that we all have this ability it's just it's just the way our brains are wired um yeah the brain is pretty fascinating Like when I'm doing these trees, I kind of have like, I can just let it flow and they'll, they'll create themselves. Just because I've already spent time looking at some paintings that I love. And I just sort of like absorb them a bit and I let my hand just do the rest. And that's kind of why, that's why I like painting from just... This isn't, this isn't, I don't even consider this painting from memory. Well, I guess it is. It's like muscle memory, right? Like my hands just sort of doing stuff. And, and I can create little cool marks, like calling them art marks. It, to me, art marks are real, meaning that certain brushstrokes to me, just to me, represent what art really is. And I got that from looking at artists that I've admired and just say, okay, I can see literally what, you know, Van Gogh did here and I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that out and then try absorbing it, make it your own. Cause when I look at some, some painters, I go, Oh, I recognize greatness. I can see greatness in some, some painters. Uh, yeah. Now, it could be, it is likely these art marks are completely just something that I've been conditioned. I mean, that's for sure, because there's, this is like the discussion about beauty. And is there such thing as empirical beauty? Is there such thing as, yeah, empirical beauty, meaning that it's universal. Because there are universal things. For example, the human smile is universal across cultures. So I think there are universal, there is such thing as universal beauty. Oh, uh, well, with humans there are, for example, symmetry. Symmetry of facial structure is a universal sign of beauty. Same with uh, clear skin because they are indicators of healthiness for reproduction. There's a correlation between physical health and the ability to reproduce with clear skin and symmetrical features. So the question I have is, when it comes to art and painting, has there ever or always been intrinsic beauty when it comes to painting? Now the answer is probably not really, because I've been heavily influenced by mostly French post-impressionists, 
the, the ones that I appeal to me the most, largely caused by the opinions of my mother, who is a very good artist, and possibly, yeah, I would say that's a big part of it. And being exposed to lots of European art um, since I was young. I was always bought art books and they tend to be like Van Gogh and, you know, I was drawn to them as well. Like I discovered most of my favorite arts by myself, just wandering through the art gallery. Like Emile Nolde, for example, I think is wicked. Not that technically good at all. Like, to be honest, nothing special about Emile Nolde's capabilities, but there's something that becomes kind of magical about... I don't even know if Emile Nolde is a man or a woman, actually. <laughs> But I like the colors. I like the impact it has. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. So that's that's my goal. My goal is to try to make something that is on par with what I consider are the greatest art, artists of all time. That's all. No big deal. And I won't accept anything less. Isn't that kind of silly? But that's 100% how I feel inside. That I'm only going to be satisfied when I'm doing something that's at least as good as Tom Thompson, Van Gogh, Clamped, no they, all these dudes, dudes and dudettes. That's that's my, it's that simple. No big deal. And I don't care about like fame or any of that shit. It's just more like a, a, a thing where I felt in tune with these people and go, wow, people are worshiping these people. And this, it's not that like what they're doing is so uh, impossible to do. You just got to put some time into it and think about it and absorb it and then make your own. That's how I always felt about it. I was never, never one to be, I've never been a worshiper. I can admire, but I've never worshiped anybody. Because all these things are within our reach. Well, it can be within your reach to some people, I guess. That's craptastic. This whole thing, I'm going to improve. It's shitty. I'm thinking about a couple of things here. I'm thinking about like a, there's like a two layers, like there's, or three layers. There's this background noise. Then there's these trees in behind. Then there's ones in the front. And then uh, there's this horizon thing. So I got to go and I got to I gotta add, I'm going to add sharp lines to the trees. I might even do the magic marker because that worked out so well. It's really hard to get the lines strong and looking good. And I still have to deal with this stupid streetcar. Holy shit. How much do I hate you? I hate the streetcar. It's silly. It's a really silly idea. It's tacky. It's a silly, tacky son of a bitch. Okay. Oops. You so tacky. You're tacky. Yeah, I don't. I don't see how I can make great art out of a streetcar. Like this is this is just pure silliness. Ah, son of a bitch. Glad I had this thing handy. Oh, you fucker. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Streetcar. Oh, that's not the right color. Well, it might be. A, it'll be up. Let's put a little bit of it in there. It's two rows. But 
Who's to say I can't put rose in there? It's more of a, say more of an orangey red, isn't it? What is this? Carmine. I don't even know what carmine is. Carmine. Carmine looks better. Let's try some carmine. Oh, shit. I think I just mixed it with a... Yeah, I mixed it with um, something. Whoops. Ugh. What am I going to do with the bottom here? The bottom is just gross. What am I going to do with you? Something isn't sitting right right now. What is it? Huh. I might have to take a break. I might have to come back to this. Carmine is a guy from Laverne and Shirley. Huh, <laughs> Laverne and Shirley. Two, four, six, eight, something incorporate. Wasn't that their, remember the beginning of the show and they're, what are they doing? They're in, they're in some, working some sort of assembly line job. And then they say, fuck it, don't they? They sort of give up and just quit or something. Laverne and Shirley, yeah, I used to watch that show a lot. Squiggly. Squiggly was Carmine. I don't remember a Carmine. I remember Squiggly. Yeah, my brain is starting to slow down right now. I gotta figure out if what am I gonna do? Let's put some orange in here. What if I put some of this? There was Squiggly and the other dude. There was two guys who were kind of like cheesy. They were the friends. Squiggly is the blonde-haired guy. Then there was the guy with the black hair who's short. They were the com comedic relief sort of. <sighs> At a beer place? I can't. What do you mean? I don't even understand what I'd be Googling at a beer place. At a beer place. I do not understand what you are trying to say. Squiggly. Oh, Carmen is the other guy? Carmen's a little dude with the black hair? Wasn't he like a like an Italian little like like almost like a he was a bit of a doofus, right? I remember Squiggly was kind of a lanky, nerdy kind of character. Carmine. Maybe that's the yeah, didn't they say like Carmine? Man, Laverne and Shirley, jeez. I can't even remember what like I kinda of remember what they look like. What's the name of that old show? Oh, I Love Lucy. That's the one. I Love Lucy. What was I Love Lucy's husband's name? Ricardo? I think it was Ricardo. And who, who was I Love Lucy's best friend? They lived upstairs. And wasn't the, the husband was Fred, I think? And he was sort of like this chauvinist dude, I think. Oh, Lucy. Oh, 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 oh. And that's how the dude laughed, I think. Can't believe I used to watch I Love Lucy.
Oh, Lucy. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa, so Julia wrote a whole book here. LaVergne Shirley is an American TV sitcom. Oh, you copied it from Wikipedia, probably. Who played for ECs, ABC, January 1983. A spinoff of Happy Days. Is that? Oh. For the lives of Laverne DeFazio and Shirley Feeney, two friends and roommates who work as bottle cappers. That's right. At the Shots Brewing in the late 50s, Milwaukee. Okay, so I, I definitely was, well, maybe I watched the originals because I was uh, 13 and 83. That was so it's Ricky Ricardo, that's right. And was he he was Cuban, I think. I think he was Cuban. And I think it's kind of like you know what it was about that show? Is it kinda I kind of have this memory of thinking that this is what marriage could be like. It could be married to like your best friend who you want to like dance with. That's kind of what I remember thinking a little bit. Like they were, because you remember how much Ricky and uh, Laverne loved each other, but also drove each other nuts. But, and they always like made up and they always put up with each other's bullshit. <laughs> like I can't remember what the issues were. I can't remember like, you know, oh, how about Three's Company? That was an awesome show too. I, lo I loved watching that. Of course, every guy wanted to be that dude because he had the two hot friends. <laughs> what was that guy's name? Three's Company. <laughs> Fuck Three's Company. Three's Company. <laughs> Okay, we gotta start working on it. We gotta start making this thing better because currently it's still kind of shitty. Michael Keane. Keenan played Squiggly's roommate Lenny. Lenny, that's who it is. That's who I was thinking of. Lenny, not Carmine. I don't know who Carmine is, but I remember Lenny. It was Lenny and Squiggly. And I actually think, didn't they have, for a short time, they had their own show? I think they did a spinoff where Squiggly, a stupid name, was, was like they had their own show. Yeah, I just don't remember. Uh, I'd have to look it up. Okay. Let's try this brush. Here's one thing I've learned. This. Don't be lazy and leave your brushes in there if you're working with fine brushes because it'll bend the tips. Because I love this little brush, but I left it in for like a couple hours once, and it's and it and it bent. No, it's the other one where I don't know where I put it, but it bends the tip. So don't do that. Don't do that. Da, 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 da. Little Rascals. I love the Little Rascals. I used to fantasize all the time about being hanging out with those guys and having the Limburger Wars. I, Limburger, I think, was a kind of stinky cheese. And they had like these forts built up where they used to have wars where they would fire Limburger bombs at their, at their enemies. There was Alfalfa, who had the weird spiked hair in the middle. 
What was the little black kid's name? What was that little guy's name? Oh, he's so cute. He had the... What was his name? There was Alfalfa? There was like four or five... Oh, uh, Porky or Spanky or something? There was the fat little kid. Porky? Spanky? And the little kid with the afro? Spanky. Maybe it was Spanky. Alfalfa, Spanky... Alfalfa. I actually never thought of this. Alfalfa is the sprout. <laughs> buckwheat. Buckwheat. That's right. How do they come up with the names alfalfa? Holy shit. Alfalfa and buckwheat are both like grains. That's hilarious. I never thought of that. Alfalfa, buckwheat. Yeah, I always wanted to hang out with those guys. I always thought there was like the, the most fun stuff and I... You know, I thought they were real. <laughs> Alfalfa, buckwheat. Uh, buckwheats. That'd be kind of interesting to find out, like, what, what they turned out to be like. You know, those... Where are they now kind of things? Buckwheat. What a weird name, Buckwheat. Like is that like a like a whole grain like when I think of buckwheat, what what is that? Hey, Ravi, Ravi Chamling, Ravi Chamling Rye, Ravi Chamling Rye, Ravi Chamling Rye. Okay, maybe at the top, I think I'm going to put some colors, different colors at the top. Too much red is poking through, so let's try bringing in some darker, like a dark blue turquoise kind of. Turquoise. Let's try turquoise. Such a neat color, this turquoise. Let's just see what it does. My tinnitus is started to pick up. And starting to get a little bit on the bothersome, bothersome side. Fuck, it makes me slur even. It's now about a seven and a half to an eight out of ten as far as unpleasantness is concerned. Whew. Things were pretty good for the past hour or so. I hardly even noticed it. But just now, it's starting to come in. I wonder what makes it happen. Like why? Why now? What's changed? Uh. Oh, God damn, you suck. I hate you. Wow, I can't remember what my life was like before this. I had it so good. <laughs> But then again, imagine if something t other like something really bad happens, like you lose your legs or something, or you go blind. Could be worse, right? I just got to keep on remembering that. Could be worse. Could be worse. Could be worse. Could be worse. My hearing is getting really bad. 
that's hasn't been fun. Like I, I go to the grocery store and I can't even hear what the people are like saying at the, at the checkout counter. I've noticed I've started to cause tilt my head and lean in a lot. Cause I can't hear like this year is fucked. This year is gone basically. I'd be at the dog park sometimes and someone's talking to me, sitting right next to me. I didn't even know they were talking because they're on this, this one side of me. I was at a dinner for a birthday with my family the other day and my brother-in-law was right next to me, talking to me. Literally, you know, a foot away from me. And I, could, I didn't realize he was talking to me. Let's see how that looks. Kind of fun. I like the pattern that's happening. Oh. Whew. Let's start playing with some lines here. Let's start like just adding some stuff. Like, what if I just did these? Okay, I really want to. Really? It's getting to be too loud. Oh, that's the wrong brown. I don't want that brown. I thought it was blue. Okay. Okay, we can make this better. It still sucks. This is still crap-tastic. <sighs>
what is bugging me about this is still this weird, weird ass. I gotta do the whole streetcar. And the whole ground looks dumbass too. What am I gonna do? How do I fix this up? Make it less crappy. Let's just do that. I'm gonna do some magic marker action. Really? Oop, ah! Okay, which is the magic marker that works? Wait. This one's pretty good. Bad. And this one's crap. Okay. <sighs> no, it's going to be dirtier and dirtier. <laughs> I'm gonna make it so it's like I haven't even touched the streetcar. It's gonna be way more contrast and darker and fit in. I just haven't got to it yet. Let's try to watch this. The problem is, I think I still have some wet paint. weird this is paper towels and big sheets how do they decide normally it's like they're like this this size who made that marketing decision what kind of product testing did they do to say some people prefer large sheets <laughs> i think i gotta go and buy a marker that's not as thick as this one I'm trying to go light because if I push too hard, it's going to be really thick. And this is already as a fat tip, which is not ideal. How does I get some paint on my face? Holy shit, is that ever loud in my head? Wow. Really? Holy. Okay. I think um, maybe I'll do a little bit more. Let's get some clean water. Put this thing over here. Um.
It actually looks nicer up close. Let me go up close. Oh, I gotta turn off autofocus. Hold on. Okay. I'll focus on. It looks nicer up close than it does at a distance. See all these little marks? They're much more interesting. That's that's gross. Blah. But this is up here is a little bit. That's shit. Where is that? I gotta fix that. Where? Right up there. I gotta fix that. I gotta fix. It. See how a nice strong line will be will be nice there but i think i'm gonna just work on a bit more i'm not more grays to these trees here make them more clean clean lines go back to auto turn off autofocus yeah. stay okay if I'm going to do that, maybe I'll choose actually a color like, let's see, where are you? What is this like? Yeah, that's kind of nice, this beige. It's very, let's put some beige in here. Yeah, it'll warm up the trees a little, warm them up a bit. Come on, just give me a break for like 10 minutes. I just want 10 minutes. Whew, actually, I'd settle for two minutes at this point. Two minutes of nice quiet. That's just would be nice. Just two minutes of just quiet. Oh, this is, I'm, I think it's beginning to freak me out a little bit. This is how it happens once in a while. It gets kind of panicky when I know I can't escape the sound. Uh oh. How do I fight this? I might have to stop. This is sometimes a bit of torture. I'm just going to try to change the subject in my head.
how many door things do there are there? So this is the curve here. Oh, this is the door. So this is one, two, three, four. Okay. Stop poking me in the thingy. There's something in the ground. Something in the ground needs work. Do I do little bits of weird shit like that? No. I don't like that color at all. What am I going to do? Where's this? Well, I think I might take a break. Just just to step away for a minute. It's still still nowhere near where I need to be. I gotta do. All right. I think I'll stop here. Okay. Stop in here. See you later. Cheerio. Have a good day. Bye bye.